for us. Amen. Your name be praised forevermore. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. I'd like to take this opportunity to appreciate every one of you and to give thanks and glory to the Almighty God for the marvelous thing he did for us in the course of last week. The half of the year Thanksgiving and Nairobi Chapel, Nairobi Church anniversary was so successful. God came down. He revealed himself. It was a time of encounter. Amen. It was a time of visitation. Amen. Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We want to say thank you. Thank you. For Johnny Mercy, you grant unto your daughters and son that Amen. came from far and near. Yes, Lord. We want to say, Blessed be your name. Amen. Thank you for your ever abiding presence that was evidenced in our midst. Yes, Lord. Thank you for healing. Thank you for salvation of souls. Amen. We glorify you, Lord. Thank you for every part where the message has been a blessing Amen. comment has been coming in yes, and father we want to say thank you thank you jesus. to you be all the glory Hallelujah. in jesus precious name Amen. in jesus precious name Amen. we go straight to our text in first corinthians as we are looking at divine <clears throat> divine provisions for our next level of breakthrough. There is always a place called forward for everyone. Every man have three phases of life to face. The past, the now, and the future. The past, the now, and the future. God has a future for you and I. And we need to understand how we are going to achieve this. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13, which is had been our anchor scripture, it said, They had no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above you are able to bear Amen. but will will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you that will make a way of escape that he may be able to bear it now when you read this in voice translation to bear it does not mean you remain stagnated. To bear it does not mean you remain stagnated in pain, in afflictions. That's not what God means. The voice translation expanded or threw more light into the state of our life. He said, and he said, any temptation you face will be nothing new. But God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can handle. So if you are handling it, then you are not stagnated. You are just navigating. He said, but he, but he always provides a way of escape so that you will be able to endure and then keep moving forward. God has a place called forwardness for everyone, every child, every son, and every daughter of God. Proverb confirm this. You see, I keep on repeating proverb. The part, listen, it doesn't matter what, what is happening around you. What is most important is that you knowing what is the plan of God for your life. You will stop praising the wicked, the enemy that is holding you captive when you know the plan of God for your life. 
<clears throat> one day I stumbled into this scripture. The Bible said the counsel of the Lord shall stand. So from that day, all I do most of the time is to find out what is the counsel of the Lord on a matter. And then I begin to celebrate in, in anticipation that God's, what God says will surely prevail. And if it is God, it will be good. Now, he said, so that you will be able to endure and then keep moving forward. Concurring with Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, the part of a just man. It has a shiny light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Now, today, we'll be looking at a very vital aspect of this series. Is that, and, and the, this very vital aspect of this series rests on two things. Number one, knowing who God is in our temptation, in our challenges. We need to know God is not against us. God is for us. And therefore, he brings all his resources to ensure that we go forward. I, I love what Joshua said. He said to the intervention of God that came to them, he said, are you for us or you are against us? Most of the time, we lose out in the battles of life because we are not able to uh, appropriate or ascertain the stand of God in our battle. I want us to know this segment, number one thing we'll be doing is to establish what is God's position, what is God's will for us in our difficult time. I want you to know very clear. One, God is not behind your trouble. God is not behind your trouble. God is on your side. You know, who supports you in any battle or conflict of life is almost 50% predicting the outcome of the battle. That was the mentality that David had. That was the mentality that Joseph had. I repeat, who is on your side in any battle, any conflict, any contest of life is almost 50% predicting the outcome of the battle in every area of life. For example, I'm a Nigeria. I love football. Every time Nigeria team is going to play, there are names you hear on the opposite, uh, on the on their opponent, the Green Eagle, and then literally you begin to get deflated. For example, if they say Nigeria will play Argentina, uh, Argentina for instance. You are not going to be afraid that we are playing Argentina, as it were. We don't, I don't get, you don't get afraid with the name. But you get afraid of the personality that are representing Argentina. When you hear the name Messi, you know, you almost have, when you hear the name Messi, that's, that's the one of the, the greatest and the best footballers in the world as of today. When they say you are playing Brazil, you don't get afraid of Brazil as it were, but when you hear the names that are representing that country, the minute you hear the name, you begin to get deflated. You know why? Because of their skill, their ability, the skill they, they possess. We almost make you to predict the outcome. Here, Messi, Di Maria, I'm telling you, you are already fidgeting. Now, I want you to know today that 
on your team is God Almighty. On your team is God Almighty. You know, Moses understood this when he asked God, God, you have asked me to take the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but you have not told me who will be going with me. And God said, my presence will go with you. Ah, it was there Moses said, otherwise, don't take us further. I want you to know in the challenges of your life, God is a member or the captain of your team. The captain of your team. Oh, that's why Paul said, if God be for us, who can be against us? In other words, if God is on our team, is part of us, there is no one who can be against us. Oh, yes, that's why Paul said, we are more than a conqueror. Most of the time when we are facing challenges, we tend to be mindful of the opposition and pay less attention to the personality of God that is in our camp. David did something with this understanding. You know what he said? I had battle with the lion. I had battle with the bear. Now I'm having a battle with a Goliath. You know what he said? He said, the Lord God that gave me the bear and the lion, he's on my team. And because of that, I can outrightly predict the outcome of, the, declare the outcome of this conflict. He said, the Lord God that gave me the bear and the lion, he will yet his strength is not abated. His loyalty, you know, that, that's what that scripture says. God is faithful. That means he's loyal and he's steadfast. He said, he will yet give me the head of this uncircumcised Philistine. Now, it was that confidence that was the backbone of David when he was running towards what other Israelites consider as danger, as a killer as a destroyer. But David ran, not that he walked, no, he ran towards Goliath with the full assurance and awareness and the confidence on, of the presence of God as the captain of his army. He said the Lord God, it is in Israel, the Lord God, God alone is able to do it. You know what David said? He said, the Lord God will give me. In other words, God will fight the battle and he will give me the crown. Amen. And that was the end. So I want you to know, in this segment of this series, you must be able to ascertain within your being that God is on your side. God is not against you. And if it is God that is on your side, he has some attribute that should give you confidence. Amen. The Bible says God is Jehovah, the mighty man of war. Amen. Job, describing his ability in warfare, he said he has never lost any battle. He said, who have fought with him and prevailed? No one. The one that has a testimony and credential of ever triumphant is on your side. You know what Jesus said? He said, blessed be the Lord who caused us always to be triumphant. Always, always. If it is God, it is victory. If it is God, if God is involved, it is a triumph. You need to know, God is not part of your problem. God is for you. God is on your side. This is the core thing. It's a core, it's a core value of this series. God is for us. God is not against us. God is not behind your problem. You know, I will show you why we need to have these fundamentals settled in our hearts. Now, 
it is when you acknowledge this truth that you begin to bring to bear the ability of God in the midst of your battle. You begin to bring to bear the ability of God. Now let's look at some of the credential of God. Uh, what he does in a situation when his people are challenged. He, remember, he's not against you. Remember, he's on your team. Remember, he's for you. Remember, he's not part of your problem and my problem. Now, look at what God brings to bear. In Isaiah chapter 43, Isaiah 43, I will read some 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 of his attributes according to scripture these are his antecedent when it comes to the battle when it comes to things that involve his people verse 16 to 18 look at what god says it does say the lord which maketh a way in the sea the sea could be a challenge remember this was the challenge of the children the red sea was the challenge of the children of Israel. And the Bible says, Thus saith the Lord. Here is his antecedent. Here is his, his credential when it comes to a time of challenges in which he is involved. Which maketh a way in the sea. Which maketh a way in the sea. A way in the sea. Oh my God and a path in the mighty waters. Remember the Bible said, when thou passest through the water, it said, the Lord will be with you. It said, the water will not get you drunk. Now the Bible say, God maketh a way in the sea, in a mighty water, water that has reached almost your mouth. But look, as long as you are inside the water, you'll just be drinking till you get drunk. The Bible say, God has a part in that water. I don't know what water is around your life. Maybe you have been diagnosed with a terminal disease. God still have his way. Amen. God still have his way. He can choke that cancer seed. Amen. He can choke that leukemia. Amen. He can destroy. He can recreate another liver. He can recreate another lungs. Amen. It doesn't matter. Oh, God grow tree on top of rock. Little soil and the tree will be standing. Not a shrub. Sometimes I see some amazing thing. So one day I saw a tree grew and, and you know, the soil that looked like cover it. It's like rock. It's in the midst of the rock. God does things. I'm telling you, there's a rock called Zuma in Nigeria. Zuma rock. When you get to that rock, you will know the wonders of God. There is a complete face of a, a, a sketch of a human face on his body. The eyes, the nose, the mouth. <laughs> you know, when you don't know God, then you call him a small boy. That's what one of Nigeria's songs say. When you don't know God, you call him a small boy. Have you not seen some amazing thing? I don't know where I traveled to around Plato State in Nigeria, and three rocks were look like they were arranged by you know by human being. On top is the small is the smallest, next is the next size, and then at the base is the biggest one. God is full of wonder. He had the part in a river. He had the part in your sea of life. Amen. He does. Amen. He's not just God of Israelite. He's your God. He's your God. So he said, he make a way. That means the way may not be in existence. And that's why you find yourself in the midst of that challenge. But right in the midst of the challenge, God can make a way for you to escape and keep on moving forward. Amen. Maybe there is a bill. Maybe there is someone in office that has vowed that as long as in that office, you are not going to get your desire accomplished. Don't worry. 
God can make a way. Amen. He did it for the daughter of Selophar. There was an existing law that forbid them to have inheritance. He put it in their heart to press for their right. And when they went, and when they went to Moses, Moses took it to the law. And the law reestablished a new law. Look, changes can begin with you. That's what I want to say. Now, go to the book of Nahum. Then you see this attribute of God. The book of Nahum. And I will read uh, now chapter 1, I think verse 5. Chapter 1 and verse number 5. Praise the Lord. He said, Verse 3 said, The Lord is slow in anger and great in power and will not acquaint with the wicked. The Lord had his way, had his way in the wild wind and in the storm and in the, and the cloud and the dust of his feet. I, I will read what our a voice translation put it is a the eternal anger the eternal anger built slowly but his power is great but his power is great he will not allow the guilty to go free his way is fiercy his way is in fiercy wind what is the wind of life that you are handling now Wind. He said, his way is fiercy in winds and storms. He said, the cloud and the dust beneath his feet. I want you to understand. God has the attribute and ability to make a way where there is no way. So when you come to a situation where you don't know what to do, it is time to turn to the way maker. Do you understand that? But let me tell you something. As a human being, when we are in challenge or we are, we are faced with challenge, when it looks like there is no more way, instead of us to look up to the way maker, you know what we do? We begin to apportion blame. I will show you in the scripture. Let's go back to Isaiah. I want to complete the reading of Isaiah chapter 43 from verse 16. Now, in verse 17, he said that bring her four chariot and horses. He said, the army and the power, they shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as toy. He said, remember, you know, the former thing. Neither consider the things of old. Verse 19. He said, Behold, I will do a new thing. What has your experience been in life? Probably you are there. Nobody has ever favored you. That is the old you, according to this scripture. Maybe you are there. Everything you touch, you never succeed. God said, No. Look up to me. I have the power to start a new thing in your life. And I don't know who you are wherever you are this hour listening to me. Trust me and trust your God. I am his servant. I have a good word for you. Things will not be as usual. Amen. God is starting a new thing in your life. Amen. Yes, I mean in your life. He said, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. It may not be there before. You may not have been walking in favor before. You may not have had find destiny helper before. You may have been struggling before. But I'm coming to you prophetically this morning. Because God said he will confirm the word of his servant that is building Jerusalem by what he's speaking to him, to it. I am speaking into your life. 
in the name that is above every other name. I decree a new experience for you from now onward. It shall no longer be business struggling as usual. You are entering into your realm of rest, which will be made happen by God that does a new thing. It is your turn to see the newness ability of God. Yes, yes, yes. You know what God said? He said he will overturn and overturn until the time of who it is and he will give it to him. It is your turn Amen. and God is giving you a new experience yes. in your relationship with him. Amen. You know how he put it? He said, behold, I will do a new things so the old can go away. He said, now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it god is aware that by virtue of what you have gone through you never believe anything new can happen it's like a goat that has been tied for long even when you release the rope the goat will still be moving around where it has been tied but i want you to have a new expectation he said i know your situation i know you have facts I know you even have reason why you think you should be in that situation. He said, but I am God that can change the narrative. He said, I will make a way in the wilderness and river in the desert. So with this assurance, I want you to begin to set your expectation that things are going to turn in your favor. I've been there before. I can feel you. There are things that I never believe it could change. And you are not the first one. But I'm here to admonish you. There are things that has happened in life to us or there are experiences we have had and we are almost going to be so certain that it cannot change, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. It's possible for the era of scarcity to be over in your life. Mm -hmm. It's possible for you to begin to live a life whereby you do what you want because you have what it takes mm -hmm. and God is set to make it happen for you and me. It's possible. The realm of abundance is possible for you mm -hmm. no matter your experience in the realm of scarcity. Mm -hmm. A realm of healing is possible for you. Mm -hmm. That disease started one day. God is terminating it today. Amen. It has life. As it's competing for your life, God Amen. is out also to compete or to, I mean, to demolish his own life, Amen. to sniff life out of every seed of cancer. Amen. God is out to do that. Amen. That's why the Bible says, even when a tree is cut down through the scent of water, it will burn again. You will find your joy again. Amen. As a widow, I don't know where you are. You are in that state of depression, feeling that all is lost. No, God is God of again and again. Amen. God is God of again and again. I want you to open up. I want you to loosen up. I want you to have expectation. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The tree that is cut down. It can see sprout. It can see sprout up. Amen. Now, as, as we look on, you say, I will do a new thing. Amen. No matter the circumstances around you, I will turn them to raw material to do that new thing. Amen. And I see God doing it for you. Amen. I see God doing it for me. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, you are watching me right now that document you are looking for in a foreign land, it can be yours. Amen. Only turn on to God and begin to believe it. Now, in Exodus, we move now to the next place. In Exodus chapter 14, I want you to see something there. Exodus chapter 14. This is the point I, I want to get you out. That's why I want you to ascertain the position of God 
in the con in your conflict of life. Now, when the children of Israel were living or left, have left uh, Egypt, verse ten says, "And when Pharaoh drew nigh, when Pharaoh, this is where we miss it. That's why I want you to ascertain who is on your side, because when you see Pharaoh." you are left to get into the realm of confusion. And that is when Satan had opportunity to be victorious over the people of God. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold the Egyptians. And behold, the Egyptians marching after them. And they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. They have forgotten that the Lord is with them. And that is what that is the position where many believers tend to lose the battle. They were crying to the Lord. They have forgotten that the Lord is with them. He has been leading them. And they said unto Moses, look at it. And they said unto Moses, because there was no grave in Egypt, thou hast taken us away to die in the wilderness. Where God is making way for you, you are speaking something different. That was the case of the children of Israel. Of Israel. God is with them, making way for them. But their eyes were on the enemy. Every time you look at the at the at the actual situation, instead of looking unto God, you are likely to become to reflect because every man will eventually reflect what he's looking at. The Bible said they look unto him and they were lighted. But in the case of the children of Israel, they were looking at the Egyptian. Every time you focus too much on your enemy, you lose the sight of God. And the God you cannot see is the God you cannot believe. And the God you cannot believe is the God that cannot perform. The, two, the, the Pharaoh drew nigh, he said of the children of Israel, to look and be mindful of God that has been with them. They were focusing on Pharaoh. They were focusing on the Egyptians. And what the Bible says, every time you look at your enemy, you begin to speak his language. You begin to magnify your problem. Look at what they say. And they said unto Moses, because there were no grave in Egypt, hast thou taking us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt, dealt, us with, dealt with us this way, to carry us forth to Egypt? Look at what they say in verse 12. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptian, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptian than that we should die in the wilderness. And you know your mouth, your utterance, create your future. But when will you begin to speak contrary to your desire? It's when you are looking at the problem. It's when you focus on your Egyptian. They only drew nigh. They only drew nigh. The Bible says, and when Egyptian drew nigh, they only drew nigh. They are only coming closer. Meanwhile, God live on your inside. So in actual sense, who is more closer to you? God is more closer to you than your Pharaoh. And look at what they say. Every time you look at your problem too much, you begin to elevate it. You begin to give it status that it doesn't have. You know what they said? They were talking of grief instead of talking of milk and honey. I, I, I love the way voice translation puts it. He said, Pharaoh approached the Israelite camp 
And the sailors saw the, the, the Egyptian army closer in on them. The Israelites were trapped and fear for their life. So they cry unto the eternal. And look at verse, over the next verse, verse 11. Were there not enough grave in Egypt? Is that why you brought us out here to die in the desert? Why have you done this to us? Why have you made us to leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you in Egypt, stop pestering us so that we can get on with our life and serve the Egyptian? You see, within their mind, there is a division. And Proverbs chapter 4 tells us, verse 23, it said, our heart is where our life starts. So within their heart, they have started talking of, they have started nursing defeat. And Philemon said, without your mind, I can do nothing. And look at what happened. He said, it would have been better for us to live as a slave to the Egyptian than to die here in the desert. And then look at uh, what happened next then don't be afraid. Stand your ground and witness how the Tana will rescue you today. Take a good look at the Egyptian for after today you will never see them again. You can see their camp were divided into two. If you, if you permit me to say their camp were divided into, three, into two. One camp is the camp of God and Moses. The other camp is the camp of the children of Israelites. Both Moses and God believe that the land of milk and honey is a reality. But they were already looking backward. And in life, you can't be looking backward and drive forward. And God wants you to go forward. And look at what God said to them. They pushed Moses, and Moses called on God in chapter in verse 14. He said, Then the eternal will fight your battle, uh, your we fight on your behalf while you watch him in silence. Then look at what God replied them. Why do you call for me? Instruct the children of Israel, Israelites, to break camp and keep moving. No matter the barrier you are seeing, keep moving. Don't look backward. You see them talking about how they would have preferred to remain a slave in the land of Egypt. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Paul said, one thing I do, I forget the past and I press towards the mark. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Somebody is saying, but the uh, man of God, you don't know what is in my front. No. Until you reach what is in your front, you cannot blame God for not removing it. Keep moving forward. You know how they put the prayer? He say, ask, you will receive. In case you ask and you have not received, he says, seek, you will find. In case you seek and you see don't find anything, he say knock. Come closer to the problem to the point that you can knock it. The children of Israel saw the Egyptian nine at a distance. Ahead of them is the Red Sea. So they were calculating in their mind that the children of Israel will get closer and they will be trapped between the children of uh, between the Egyptian and the sea. Some of the time, this is what the scripture, you are the one who formulates your barrier that deny you your breakthrough. You are the one who work it out in your mind. That's why the Bible says, cast down imagination. Cast down every imagination and every knowledge that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. 
you are the one who imagined that by the end of the month you will not get your rent if you have not gotten your rent the landlord will call auctioneer they are all in your mind you are the one you create a future from your mind that's why Solomon said, guard up your mind with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of your life. The children of Israel, they began to regret their move. Why? They can see the Red Sea, and at their back, they can see the Egyptian. But do you know the amazing thing? None of this. They were in the middle. Why is it that they are saying they will die, and why are they not saying when we get to that river, we will sweep, or the river we we divide, or the sea we divide, we part way. You can see what eventually happened was never in their imagination. Was never. I pray for you, you will understand. Mm -hmm. The children of Israel were in the middle, but they believe that terror will be met on them by the by the forces coming behind them, but they never believe that the Red Sea can part with it. That's why I say, be it unto you according to your faith. When you look at Genesis, at Genesis chapter 11, on the contrary, you know what the Bible says? It said, the thing that they have imagined, no one could stop them. So always have positive imagination. You have tendency to imagine evil, but that is not what you want. Use your imagination for what you want. Amen. I pray for you. On Wednesday, I'll be continuing from this point. We'll be looking at what happened when they got to the Red Sea. Don't stop saying nobody will help you. Approach someone first. Stop saying, I don't think I will get money. Let that time come first. Believe that miracle will happen when that time comes. Don't believe that shame will happen. It is well with you. God bless you. Nice talking to you. And I declare you have a fruitful week. In case you have been online and you have been listening to the word of God, as I'm privileged to bring you to, the, to your very comfort zone, and you are not born again, you don't know Jesus, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Stop imagining that if you receive Christ, you will backslide. Believe God that when you get saved, you will move right into the center of the will of God for your life. And as you do that, I tell you that imagination will be established for you in the name of Jesus Christ. You are not born again. You want to give your life to Jesus this hour? Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I am a sinner. I invite Jesus into my life. Forgive me my sin and my trespasses. I believe in my heart that you died and you rose from the grave, that you are also the son of God. And your death and your resurrection is for the atonement of my sin and my hope for eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. For I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. In case you have prayed this prayer with me, the banner display, that's my address. And the second banner is our physical address in our various city where our ministry is represented. In case you have prayed this prayer with me and we are not close to you, don't hesitate to look around you, a Bible-believing church, and begin to go to church. I thank God for the prayer and the decision you have made this morning. I know you will never remain the same. God bless you and prosper you. In Jesus' precious name. For the rest of us, it's time to worship the King. Stop imagining if you give that money, you won't get another one. Because whether you like it, that amount of money in your hand will leave your hand. Why don't you put it in the hand of God and let God meet your need? Why don't you look for what to do by sharing this message this morning and be a blessing? Offering does not always have to be cash. It can be in kind. Why don't you look what you can give towards the ministry to enhance our ability to reach out to more crowds? But make sure you take a step today. And God will honor your step of faith and reward you with his abundance. Lord, accept their offering. Use it for the advancement of your kingdom and in return, bless them. Thank you for those who are sharing this message to make it a blessing to others. Lord, accept that their sacrifice that they are making right now, even with their data. 
and thank you for that one that is thinking how can i be of help how can i come on board with this ministry and this man of god to make the ministry more acceptable and more reachable to as many that god has called this ministry to be a blessing keep on thinking about the kingdom and when god begins to think about you life will open up and pour you favor that you never imagined god bless you and prosper you see you on wednesday and it's going to be an amazing time as we are getting to the end of the month get ready for the best of god it is not over until you win be blessed see you next time god bless you